All right. Greetings, everyone. I'm having a small little camera glitch. So I'm going to wait for it to iron itself out. I've been having this ongoing camera glitch with my Zoom lately. It's um, causing me more trouble than I wish it would. You know what I mean? So I'm going to give it a few minutes for folks to join. We have several dozen people registered for this webinar. Not everybody will make it live and that's okay because we're recording it and we're absolutely going to email it out. So if you're watching live, say hello. If you're watching on the replay, hi, you can't say hello, but I'm looking forward to just riffing with you about the Primal Health Coach Master Coach course, which is a course that I teach and love for many reasons. And um, I'm excited to talk about it with you today. So just give me half a second to get myself organized. And uh, I want to take you through a little bit of what we're going to talk about today. So if you're watching live and you wish to uh, engage with me, ask me questions, you have the option of doing that in the chat. You could also pop a question in the Q&A box. I have a lot of information to give you. So you just might be surprised to find that I uh, will cover everything that needs to be covered at some point in today's session. So hang with me here. I love talking about this because it's actually one of my favorite one of my favorite things to do, one of my favorite parts of my job is teaching master coach. I have a lot of different things that I do as your coaching and curriculum director. And one of my absolute favorites is teaching the master coach course. So uh, I also love talking about it and I would love to see you in it. I'd love to work with you and help you really achieve the success you were hoping that you would achieve when you became a health coach. When you decided to certify as a health coach, I really do invite you to, to do that sort of reflect back on your genesis as a health coach. Why are you here? This is a question we ask you all the time. Why are you here? What brought you to this? And at some point is because you had an urge to share and, and teach and help. And you knew that you had something to offer the population writ large. And so that is where we shine as coaches, just a small editorialization for a moment. I believe this is going to be a pretty banner year for coaches. I have no, I have no data to support that. This is truly anic data, just on what I'm seeing in my own health coaching practice and what I'm hearing from people in the world. And maybe you've had a, maybe you've had a, maybe you've noticed that as well, that, that folks are kind of at this season of life where it's sort of like, you know what, enough is enough. I'm being bombarded by programs and templates and plans and, you know, gurus in my ear, selling me a meal plan, selling me a fitness app, selling me all these things. And it's overwhelming. People are finding themselves overwhelmed and they're acknowledging that they're overwhelmed. And they're thinking there must be some better way where I can really learn to embody this and, and, and change my life and my health for good. And so this sort of self-empowerment that I'm finding that clients are sort of warming up to is really useful because um, it's useful for us as coaches because that, that specifies a state of readiness that is ripe for us to come in and really wow clients with the outcomes of a coaching relationship. Okay. So just really quick, super quick agenda for today. Let me just pop this up for you. The world's most basic PowerPoint presentation. <laughs> so for today's master coach information session, what we're going to cover today is why mastering the art of coaching is the secret weapon for health coaching business success. There's a little bit of a, like a wild and crazy concept because this master coach is not a business course. Like we're not addressing your business in master coach. But what always ends up happening when I teach a master coach course is that we immediately can see how shoring up our coaching ability delivers us to the clarity needed to now hit the ground running on business. I want to talk about that specifically and how this type of training helps to solve for imposter syndrome. Okay. I want to talk about how coaching is completely different than teaching. That is something that I definitely want to drive home to you. And I would like you listening, whether you're watching live or on the replay to consider this, to be very open-minded to this, that coaching and teaching are completely different. That throws a lot of coaches for a loop. And I will tell you that I've had people even in the master coach course who've pushed back on this. And I have a really pretty moderate stance that I think you'll like, that I think will um, surprise you and delight you. So please hang with me on that.
Uh, we're going to cover that coaching is a kinesthetic skill best learned by practicing. So we're, we're sort of fitness and movement, uh, lovers, I think many of us here. So we understand this idea of the kinesthetic learner. So we have our visual learning, we have our auditory learning, and we have our kinesthetic learning, which is this embodiment practice, physically practicing a thing. And there are a lot of practices that we do that can only be learned by physically doing it. And I always share the anecdote of how I tried to learn to swim by reading a book. It made it very difficult. The book got extremely soggy, but anyways, we're going to talk about that today. I will go through all the logistical details of the live course because Master Coach is a live, we call it a synchronous course. It must be taught live and you must attend live. Don't worry. I have an easy workaround for you if you can't attend live. This is per the National Board of Health and Wellness Coaches because the Master Coach course is a nationally board approved uh, coaching education stream. And we had educational um, non-negotiables that we had to meet. And one of them is the synchronous learnings. This is why the live sessions are compulsory in order to satisfy this educational requirement. If, and when you decide to sit the national board exam to become a board certified health coach, you will have, you will have had to attend all of these sessions live. So I'm going to talk about when those are, what we're going to go through. You're going to get a real clear picture of how that goes. And then I will just lightly touch on the board exam stuff. So for those who do want to become board certified, I'll take you kind of through really generally how that goes. It's a, it's a pretty well-oiled machine that is run through another organization called the National Board of Health and Wellness Coaches. Their website is incredibly robust. If you ever had any questions or curiosities on how to become board approved, that website is where you go to really just fully understand that. But I can speak to it from somebody who has written the board exam and who has sent hundreds of coaches, well, We've graduated hundreds, hundreds of coaches, sent dozens to the board exam. Uh, and then we'll talk about board certification just generally. Okay. I do want to spend most of the time today talking about the course and, and, and how and why it's so useful to coaches for many reasons. And so the board exam stuff, I'm going to just really be kind of just an addendum at the end. Um, Again, the, all of that stuff is very, very self-explanatory on the National Board of Health and Wellness Coaches website, which is nbhwc.org. So find that one out, okay? So right out the gate, first thing is why is mastering the art of coaching the secret weapon for health coaching business success? I really do want to just for one quick moment before I press go on my next slide and give you the answer to this question, I want to reiterate what we're talking about here is is the coaching relationship, the coaching piece of the puzzle, right? And business is sort of like another piece of the puzzle. In fact, when you do our certification course, we have the education kind of broken out like that because it just for it just makes sense to teach things in sort of in silos like that. So we teach you nutrition and fitness and movement, and we teach you biochemistry and cellular biology and all the metabolism stuff, all the science of primal health. We teach that primal health and fitness in our in our in our sort of health and fitness nutrition pillar. Then we move you into the coaching pillar. We teach you how to coach and why that's important and the, the sort of parameters and the moving parts of a coaching relationship. And then we teach you the business stuff and it's sort of broken down in a stepwise fashion. But the deal is it's not really like that. In real life, it's all commingling. Um, I'm speaking to you now as a practicing health coach. I've been practicing for, this is my ninth year in business. Your coaching skills and your business uh, development efforts are related. They are not separate. Similarly, like your nutrition education and your health and fitness education is not separate. These things all work together. So I do believe that if you, if, because you're here and you wanted to become a health coach, there are business tools and business, this business knowledge you have to learn. It's not hard. And the coaching knowledge has to be learned. It all has to be learned and then it has to be embodied and practiced. Um, I just think it's really important to know that if you try to go out and start a business as a health coach without really becoming fully convinced of your ability to coach, you will find yourself struggling to get a toehold in business. This is imposter syndrome. And I'm sure that that just triggered quite a few people watching this. Imposter syndrome is what holds most people back from starting their business. I just led a webinar last week on business development. And I received hundreds of questions that people wanted me to address. And imposter syndrome was the biggest one. What am I doing? Why am I doing this? I thought I could do this, but now I'm doubting myself. So here's where 
mastering the art of coaching solves that. Okay. You could have the most robust business in the world. You could have, you could be a very technologically advanced person. You can understand how to put a business together. Maybe you've started a different business before in your life. And so you have an understanding of how to do that, but without the coaching knowledge, it's always going to feel like it's eluding you this new business. And here's why that is very simply. I, I believe this from the bottom of my heart. And I do hope you can still see, see my screen. I think it's still showing. It's this competence, confidence, clarity continuum. And I do believe it is, it is a stepwise continuum like that. So perhaps you've heard this, um, sort of little, little story, the story of conscious competence or unconscious competence, right? So at first you don't know what you don't know. Then you move and you now you know what you don't know. You're highly aware of what you don't know. Then you get to the point where you, you know what you know. So you've learned and you're getting smarter and you're getting, your skills are improving. And now you're really hyper aware and very much micromanaging the experience of what you know. But then you get to this point where you don't know what you know. This is the unconscious competence. And it truly only comes through practice and it truly only comes through embodiment. So this competence, confidence, clarity continuum, it's a lot of C words, but we can do it. Confidence, confidence, clarity is really to me, the easiest way to describe why mastering the art of coaching is going to help you in your business. Okay. Inside the master coach course, we double down on coaching competency. In fact, I want to show you later in this presentation, pretty quickly here, the grading rubric that I use to grade master coach students assignments. There's competency. This is a list of competencies. So you're going to see what is expected. What, what does a competent coach deliver inside a coaching conversation, inside a coaching relationship? There's dozens of them. And maybe you don't even know what they are. We teach them in the, in the, in the, in the health coach certification course, and maybe you've read them. Maybe you've read and listened to audiobooks to understand the concepts of these competencies, but to be competent in a physical practice, like health coaching, like snowboarding, like pickleball, like deadlifting, like anything, you have to actually physically do it. You, there, there's something to be said about physically executing. We can learn a lot from observational learning. So watching videos, you know, watching, watching talks, being immersed, listening to podcasts, reading books, we can learn to a certain point. And the rest of the way we get to full competence by physically doing. So math, the master coach course is coaching competence all wrapped up in a bow in 12 weeks. I'm, I'm going to put a very fine point on this. You will go from feeling like, I don't know what I'm doing to I got this. I 100% can execute a coaching conversation in any situation with any person at any time effortlessly it in 12 weeks. Listen, I've seen this. I've seen this now we've run this course probably four or five times, maybe more than that. Hundreds of people have gone through it. I've personally witnessed as the instructor of the course, hundreds of people go from, I kind of understand coaching in theory to quickly demonstrating coaching mastery. I've seen it with my own eyes because we get in and practice together. I'm watching people progress. It's delightful. It is mind blowing. You'll be mind blown by your own progression into competence. But I just really need to reiterate the entire point of the master coach course, the entire outcome from my perspective as the instructor is to deliver you to absolute competence in any coaching scenario. And you can ask master coach graduates, you can put a little comment in the, in the Facebook group and say, Hey, do you guys feel like you're competent? Do you feel like you know what you're doing in a coaching relationship? And I feel very confidently, <laughs> I feel very confident that you're going to get high uptake on that one from, from master coach graduates. So now we have competence. Once you're competent, once you know, listen, I know how to execute a coaching conversation. I know how to encourage and nurture change from within people. I know how to coach. I know what I'm doing. Not only do I understand, you know, maybe the primal health and fitness concepts, which we all live and breathe, but now I know how to bring people into it and how to, how to chip away at their important goals bit by bit by bit, have their goals and be their idea and have them be excited and have them feel confident in their goals. Um, 
now I, now I can build a business. Oh my gosh. I know. I understand this beautiful health technology that we have available to us in the primal model. I understand coaching. Oh my goodness. It's time to go to business. It's something about the confidence that comes from competence that gets us into, I got it. I, I got it. I know what I need to do. I know what business needs to exist. I know what problem I can solve. I'm confident that I can solve the problem and help people solve their own problems. It's time to go to business. For many graduates of this course, the competence, confidence, clarity continuum was a thing that got them out of their own way so they could start their health coaching business, which is why you're here. You enrolled in a health coaching school to become a health coach. Are you a health coach yet? If you're not a health coach yet, if you're not out there actively coaching clients, why not? Remember, this is not a business course. So I'm not here to talk about business, but a lot of people will say, well, I don't know where to find the clients. I don't know where to start. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. That is a lack of confidence. You're lacking confidence. Why are you lacking confidence? Because you're missing some piece of competence and that's okay. Why would, why would we emerge spontaneously competent in a new skill like coaching and a new and emerging skill like coaching? Coaching is a new and emerging um, sort of a body of study area of, of study, right? So it's not something that we have a lot of experience with, uh, with culturally. So it's a new thing. You know, there's tons of, you can apply this to tons of things. Imagine, imagine a future uh, coaching client of yours, who's trying to understand a new way of eating and they're going to feel uncomp incompetent at that. They're going to feel like, I don't know how to live my life without grains and industrial seed oils, They'll learn through practicing and you will patiently expect them to practice and falter and try again and practice falter till they achieve competency, but it has to be done in practice. Okay. So that's why health coaching is a physical embodiment practice as I shared. Okay. So my friends, the next thing I want to just touch on, and I don't have a slide for this. So I'm just going to talk with you how coaching is different than teaching. And I just want you to kind of hear this rally cry, sit with it for a moment. Let me know what comes up for you when you hear it. But just consider that there is infinite information out there. Infinite. We have more access to information now than we ever have in the history of time. So if your clients needed more knowledge, they could easily get it. They could get it for free on YouTube. They could get it for cheap at the bookstore. They could buy any online course that any guru is selling and learn it themselves and be off to the races, but they're not. We still have a very unwell, very, be very bewildered, unhealthy population of people, populations with plural, because there's a lot of different populations of unwell people out there that need health coaches. So whatever your area of expertise is, there's a little population for you. There's a population for me. There's a population for all of us. There's lots of people. Don't worry. And you only need a few, a few dozen clients to have a successful business. So that's the good news. We're not here to talk about business though. We're not here to talk about business. Now, Coaching is different than teaching. And I really, really hammer this home when I'm teaching the master coach course. We teach it in the online curriculum. There's an online part. I teach it a lot when I'm facilitating the, the group coaching sessions. You'll see it when I show you the grading rubric. What I, what I do want to hear from coaches, what I don't really want to hear from them. I don't want to hear the coach's voice that much on the coaching conversation. It's not about the coach standing at the pulpit talking at the client, much like I'm standing and talking at you right now, you're listening. If this was a one-on-one -on -one conversation, we'd be having a lot more meaningful interaction. You know what I mean? Like we, we, we don't, our clients, the last thing they need is more talking heads, because I think we can all agree that the health and wellness space is pretty full of that. And it hasn't really helped. So we have to try something completely different. Now, here's something for you. When I teach, when I, when I encourage coaches to move away from teacher role into coaching role, what they think is, oh, I've just lost my leadership role in this relationship. No, no, you're still a leader. Coaching is still a leadership role, but it's this leading from beside this partnership type of leadership that I really 
that really makes a difference. That really makes people feel heard. They, they want to do the work because they have a partner, a willing partner who's knowledgeable guiding them along this, this long path to change to long-term change. It's not this subordinate insubordinate role. It's not the, the boss, the big boss who's in charge of the, of the health stuff, dispensing health wisdom to a hapless client who just receives it and hopes for the best. We, we know that doesn't work. I think I've said that 10 different ways. So I think we're clear on that, but here's the deal here. The pushback I do get is, well, like, but I'm the coach. I should be an expert in something. Aaron, you yourself have said coaches should be an expert. You should have an area of expertise. Yes. Yes. Please acknowledge the nuance here. Your prospective clients do expect you to have an expertise in something, right? So I talked about this on our business webinar last week, and I'm going to talk about this in the business course that I'm launching in February as well. Launch your business. You need to declare a specialty and an expertise in the health realm, right? Mine is insulin resistance. Cool. Not necessarily diabetics, but people who are on the insulin resistance spectrum and have those symptoms. And they're probably middle-aged people like me. So that's my area of expertise. I know a lot about that. And I can teach a lot about that. And my clients work with me because they know that I'm an expert at that. But I don't just talk to them about insulin resistance every single day. I don't just assign goals to them and tell them, here's what you're going to do today. Here's why it's important. It's not about me. But your clients do want to learn from you. So it's important to have an area specialty. And we drive this home in the main certification course. Who are you and what are you doing here? I've asked you that already five times. What is your calling card? What is your origin story here? Okay, so your clients expect you to have expertise. And they want to learn from you. So in moments, you will drop into teacher mode. In moments, you will drop into teacher mode. But you're not full-time in teacher mode. So I definitely want you to change your mind on that. If you take nothing else away from this webinar take that away. How can I change my energy from teacher leader to coach partner leader, right? The way we nurture long-term health change is not by teaching and telling. Our clients have already been taught and told and lectured and diagnosed and prescribed enough. Our role as health coaches is not to foist or convince or continue to overwhelm or impress or preach to our clients. Our role is to facilitate change from within them. And this is change they want to make because it's important to them at a deep values-based level. This is completely different than than a guru telling you what to do, telling you what to eat, telling you how to move. This is asking the client how they want to eat, how they want to move, how they want to live, co-creating goals with them, process goals that get them to their eventual outcome goals. Coaching relationship is an endurance event (laughs) and it is client led. Okay. The change that we've helped facilitate in people is not temporary change. If, if people want a temporary change, here's your meal plan. Let me tell you how to execute it. Here you go. That's not the temporary change. We're done with that. We're here for permanent change. What we help facilitate in people is this concept of self-accountability and self-efficacy, a very learned skill for somebody who's been bewildered by health practices for their whole life. They've never been accountable to themselves. If you've ever had a discovery call with a prospective client, they always say, prospective clients always say, the reason I reached out to you is because I need someone to hold me accountable. And I always say, what if you held yourself accountable? And they realized they never considered that. That was not even an option on the menu as far as they knew. And when you mention it, they say, well, yeah, actually, that's a great idea, but I haven't been successful in that thus far. Perfect. This is where a coaching relationship shines because we're going to practice that. We are going to help the client practice self-accountability, learning what works for them, learning what feels good, putting down reps of practice until it's second nature to them and until they're feeling competent and confident on their own. And I also just think as another sort of point to this is I think that coaches should consider that the coaching relationship should be able to end successfully. It should have a successful end. Like in a perfect world, the client would graduate out of your care at some point down the line, 
fully able to do it on their own. That is self-efficacy, pretty much the dictionary definition of it. So it's like, you want to think about your coaching relationship from the beginning to the, to the potential end. And what does the client have to achieve in that time? Do they need more information? No, you can't just give them books and say, okay, off you go. Cause that didn't work up until now. So we're not in the teacher mode. Coaching is different than teaching. So if you have been, and by the way, no hate, no shade here. If you have been the kind of coach that tends to teach and talk and tell, please consider that a different approach will probably be more successful for you in the realm of health coaching. When I first started health coaching, I was a teacher, a talker and a teller. I would talk and tell and teach about insulin resistance to my clients who were insulin resistant, but didn't really know that they were insulin resistant. They don't really know what that means. They might've received a dubious kind of warning from their doctor about insulin resistance, but they don't know what it means. So I felt it was my job to just explain it to them until they fully, fully checked out and were confused. And in the early days, I was not having great success as much as I am now. And I'm grateful that I went through that period of being kind of a clunky teacher. I felt like I was good at teaching about insulin resistance, but they didn't need to teach. They didn't need to be taught. They needed to understand their lived experience of their health struggle and how they could enact little tiny, but impactful and important changes in their unique life that would eventually get to the outcome goal of no longer being insulin resistant. But it's, and it's, there's so much value and it is such a rewarding experience to co-create, to co-create these tiny, tiny, tiny client led goals that, you know, as the expert, because you are the expert, you know, as the expert that even though this tiny goal that this client and I created today, it doesn't seem like it immediately answers the outcome problem, but you know, on some level, like this is a good step. This is a good step. And I've helped this client understand they're going to go off and practice this very simple step. And that's going to be another step on their journey to, um, to finally being healthy and free from this sort of health fixation that's overwhelmed them. Like for this reason, health coaching ends up being an inherently long-term relationship because we don't want to rush people through it. We need them to, to try things on, to run experiments in their lives, to come back and report back on how it went, collect the data, I call that go run this experiment, bring the data back. Let's talk about it with no judgment, only curiosity. How did that go? You know, a lot of times in my coaching relationships, I'll do that with my client. I'll say, look, here's your experiment for this week. For example, I'd love for you to try to get 30 grams of protein at breakfast. Here's an example of how that might look. Here's some proteins that you like. I know you don't like fish and I know you don't like pork. So let's double down on chicken and beef. So here's how much chicken and how much beef you should eat every day at breakfast. Okay. So then just go do that. And I want you to report back. And here's the things I'd love for you to pay attention to. Let me know how your snacking habits show up. Let me know how your energy and your blood sugar balance goes through the day. Just pay attention to those things, bring that information back to our next coaching session. And we'll discuss if they come back and it didn't work because they didn't, they couldn't get out of bed early enough to cook the breakfast. And so they were snacking all day and it just kind of fell apart. No judgment. What can we adjust there to try again next week? Maybe they come back and they say, yeah, it went pretty well. I did notice that I was snacking less and I did find that I didn't have that 3 p.m. blood sugar crash. So lots of, you know, notice a couple of good things. I'll say, you know, I think we should, what do you think if we do that? What if we, what if we do that again for a second week? Let's just do that again for a second week. So we're going to lay down another rep. So you can see that a coaching relationship when it's really well executed is not dramatic. It's not a dramatic change. It's not a crash diet. It's a relationship where you are, are the expert coach, the client is the expert client, and you, co you combine your areas of expertise to create this very unique plan for that, co that client, which I think is pretty cool because as health coaches, our scope of practice prevents us from creating personalized meal plans, which let's be grateful because it's a pain in the butt to make those. It's terribly time consuming and not fun to do that, nor is it really impactful. What we can do is we can say, we have this primal eating methodology, which is general. Let's take this little piece of it and give it to this client as an experiment. Have that client play around with that little tiny piece of primal eating. Maybe it's a little grain elimination experiment, or maybe it's a little dairy elimination, or maybe it's the protein at breakfast. Like I just said, we get to really piecemeal the primal approach down into tiny little components that apply to the client in front of you. And you might have 10 clients, all of which are running completely different experiments and reporting back different outcomes. And it's so fun, but it's, it, but we have to remove ourselves from the teacher role. 
in order to be able to enact this type of relationship. And I just want you to know how, how fun it is and how rewarding it is to get into that. Okay. So moving in through my, my agenda here, coaching is a kinesthetic skill best learned by practice. And this to me is absolutely not up for debate. I, we have wonderful written curriculum in the main health coaching certification course, right? So master coach is a course that we layer over top of your main primal health coach or primal fitness coach certification. That course primal health coach or primal fitness coach is a standalone health coaching certificate. You get that cert, you call yourself a health coach. You are good. We enforce coaching role play in that course for this reason, before you can graduate the primal health coach or the primal fitness coach course, you have to do at least one role play and submit it to us for acknowledgement. Ideally, you'd all do a dozen, a dozen. Ideally, you do more than one because you learn more by practicing. We get better at what we practice. We just all know that already. Um, in the master coach course, I'm doubling down on it. Practice is baked in the cake. Fully half of the live sessions, which I'm going to get into the logistics here shortly, fully half of the live sessions are practice. You spend half the time in this course actually practicing coaching or watching your peers practice and or watching practice. You're immersed in practice. And I have seen the confident, the competence, confidence, clarity continuum happen quickly for people in this course. Quickly. I said that already in this call. It's a 12 week course by week three or four. They're off to the races. They get it. And I'm going to help you build this competence by delivering very specific coaching drills for you to practice. It's really fun. Every time we get together for the coaching practice, you're going to have a specific skill that you're going to want to practice. So we kind of we kind of break the coaching skills down into little segments and we practice them bit by bit. And then we fold it all up into, into a massive sort of coaching conversation template that you can, you can use for everything. And I want to get into that a little bit later. So I see this transformation happen quickly in the master coach course. Coaches move from generally understanding how a coaching relationship should look and feel and sound to being able to execute a coaching conversation Every time, no matter who is in front of them, this is key. This is very exciting. So hear me out. When you master this, you can execute a meaningful transformational coaching conversation with anyone, anyone. Okay. They could be a vegan. They could be, I don't know, a, a they could be an endurance athlete. They could be your mother-in-law. They could be somebody who's trying some weird keto. It could anyone because the coaching conversation is client led. So any client that is in front of you is leading the conversation and you know how to pick up the cues and how to drive the conversation forward with anyone. This comes in incredibly handy for a couple things. For discovery, first of all, so if you do happen to get a prospective client on the, on the phone with you, who's interested in working with you, that's a coaching call. Your discovery call is a coaching call and you can nurture the client, the prospective client through a really beautiful coaching conversation in the discovery call that impresses them. They'll never have felt more heard in their life than they will be by, by being heard and acknowledged by a really competent coach. It's very exciting experience for the end user to be listened to like that active listening, right? We all kind of know on some level what that is, what I think we kind of think we know what active listening is, but you're going to learn it and you're going to learn how to actually execute it. And learning the skill of active listening is not only going to help you in your health coaching business, it's going to help you in your life. I get that feedback constantly from master coach grads who have better conversations with their family and their partners and their coworkers because they learned how to actively listen. And it's true. It's a wonderful life skill, but it's a really crucial health coaching skill from a discovery and enrollment perspective, obviously once you're in the coaching relationship, but I even think it comes in handy in your marketing efforts, right? So if somebody slides into my DMs and asks me a question because they heard me on a podcast and they want to know what I think about X, Y, Z, I can engage them in a coaching conversation, maybe through a voice memo to find out what's important to them and why they're asking this question and what they really mean by it. And they, people feel really heard. And when they feel heard, they get excited. They want to work with somebody who has actually listening to them. 
So there's a, there's a ton of benefit to learning this, this sort of active listening and motivational interviewing skills that are taught in master coach. Okay. I'm trying to be really, really nimble here and very concise. And I'm already at 35 minutes of flapping my gum. So I want to get into some logistics with you. Okay. So give me one second to pull up my little PowerPoint. Here we go. So I'm going to show this to you. Okay. The logistics of the February, 2023 class. So we are currently enrolling for our, our, let's call it the winter, spring, winter, spring, um, class. We run it twice a year currently. So like winter, spring, February, and then we do one again in September, take the summer off. Um, I hope these dates are pretty clear to you, but pretty much we're starting pretty quickly here. So when January 15th, on January 15th, the students will begin enrolling in the course. So th there's an online course curriculum that you have to complete lots of reading. There are exams. Um, there's exercises in there as well. Lots and lots of great material, amazing material, wonderful material. Um, January 15th is when we open the course. So you can start kind of chipping away at that. The course curriculum is dripped one chapter a week, just like our, our current uh, certification courses, but we, we really do rein you in, in the master coach course, because this is a live, uh, uh, synchronous course. We kind of want to all move along together. So you get a chapter a week. My encouragement is do your chapter as soon as it's delivered to you there. The chapters become available on Tuesdays when Tuesday chapter becomes available, chip away at it over the next week or so, because that's the chapter we're going to discuss in the subsequent live session. We really do move along stepwise. You have to kind of keep up. You won't have any trouble keeping up. If you have other things going on in your life, I get it. This is totally manageable curriculum. Don't worry. You can, you can do it. A question I get all the time is, should I, should I, should I finish the primal health coach course first and then do this? Or how should I do it? My advice would be if you've enrolled a master coach, press pause on primal health coach or primal fitness coach, do master coach, just double down on it and come back to the main certification course when you have time, because the main certification courses are self-paced. There's no timeline on that, but this is a live course. So I would say focus as much energy as you can afford on this. Most people taking master core, master coach are juggling many things in life as we all are. They're juggling jobs and they're juggling families. They're juggling other courses and they get it done. So it's not an overwhelming curriculum. It's a beautiful curriculum and it opens on January 15th. February 2nd is our first live session. It's the welcome webinar. So it's just going to be me kind of, again, welcoming you, having a couple of getting acquainted games so we can see each other's faces on Zoom. That's pretty much your last chance to enroll. So even though the curriculum opens on January 15th, as long as you're enrolled before the live sessions begin, you're good. So you, so you have until then, from my perspective, you have like almost a whole month to consider doing this. Um, if you have questions about the course that I haven't answered here yet, please reach out to me at uh, mastercoach at primalhealthcoach.com. That is my dedicated master coach email address. I would really encourage you to email that email address, not my other email address. If you happen to know it, because my other email address is specifically for internal projects and you, your message will get lost. Mastercoach at primalhealthcoach.com. If you have any questions, because I teach the course, I'm your teacher. I'm obsessed with delivering this course. I I work myself into a lather, making sure it's a beautiful, perfect, excellent learning experience for you. So if you have questions, I'm who you ask. Okay. Master coach at primalhealthcoach.com. So then we have, we have sessions on Tuesdays and Thursdays, Tuesdays and Thursdays for about 12 weeks. Okay. Cause there's 12 chapters in the course. The sessions are 90 minutes long. So we have to, we have to do three live hours a week. So about 90 minutes long, uh, each session. Okay. The Tuesday sessions are lectures and discussions. We have a lecture on the topic of the week, right? So we're moving through the chapters, one chapter a week. So we have the weekly lecture and then a discussion around that. So just open discussion. What do you want to talk about? Let me give you some talking points. Let's think about this. Let's unmute ourselves and have actual conversation with each other about these coaching con concepts. We learn so much from each other. We there's such a variety of people in master coach from people who have never coached before, who are brand new in school to people who are practicing coaches, people working for coaching organizations and everything in between people coaching keto, people coaching fasting, people coaching women, people coaching men, people coaching athletes, people coaching moms, you name it. Okay. It's 
It's such a cool community. The community is the neatest part. So on Tuesdays, we have these compulsory, I'm going to talk about this compulsory lecture, okay? You'll see on my slide here that I have two times. This is something that we're trying for this round of the course. I live in the mountains. I'm mountain time. So I, I typically have taught this class on Tuesday and Thursday evenings, mountain time, 5 p.m. mountain time, because it's convenient for me. We're also going to add 10 a.m. Pacific time, which is confusing to switch the time zones like that. So that's 11 a.m. mountain time. You can extrapolate it out to your time zone. I'm not going to do that for you here, but you can definitely do that math. So we have a daytime time slot and an evening time slot. And my hope is that this will um, help open it up to people who have different schedules. If it if you maybe have more availability during the day, maybe you live in Europe, whatever it might be. There's a time, this time slot that works for just about everybody. And this is hard to do. It's very hard to find a time slot that works for everybody to make it also a meaningful experience because you want there to be other people in the room with you. So we're going to give this a try, see how it goes. So you can decide if you want to join the morning class or the evening class, you can flip back and forth. It doesn't matter to me. You don't have to let me know, just show up for either one. I'll be teaching both of them and they'll be the same. Tuesday is going to be the lecture and discussion, whether you come in the morning or in the evening, it's compulsory. So you must attend, but if you can't, don't worry. I got you. I'll explain that in a second. The Thursday sessions, Again, 10 a.m. Pacific or 5 p.m. Mountain Time, also compulsory. This is the facilitated coaching practice. Sometimes I like to make this longer. So sometimes I might shrink the lectures on Tuesday and make the practice sessions on Thursday longer because we do get a lot out of it. That's something I might be experimenting with this year as well. Um, in the facilitated coaching practice, what happens is you're given a coaching drill. So I deliver your drill of the day. I'm like, you're going to go into your groups and practice this thing. You're then broken out into Zoom breakout rooms. So we're doing this all over Zoom, by the way. And you're in, you get put into these random breakout rooms with three or four or five people, depending on how many people show up. There's also a facilitator in that room who's a master coach graduate. And the facil facilitator will run you through the coaching drill. They'll partner you up and say, okay, Bob and Sally, you're going to hit this coaching conversation. You have 17 minutes, go. And then all the cameras go off and you and Bob and Sally go for it. They have their coaching conversation. They practice this drill. It's a completely safe and experimental practice um, environment. There's no grading. You don't get judged if you flub your words or if you, you could, if you want to say, you know what, I don't like the way that question was going. I want to start again. That's what we want. Okay. That's what we create in these breakout rooms. So you get to practice tons of practice every Thursday uh, for, for 90 minutes you're practicing. April 18th through the 27th, the last few days of the course are group presentations, and these are on health topics. This is just a specific educational requirement we had to meet for the National Board of Health and Wellness Coaches, the NBHWC. We had to deliver some, we had to deliver some conventional health education to you. So because the Primal Health Coach course teaches unconventional health stuff, we had to bring a bit of the conventional stuff into the Master Coach course so you can learn what say the CDC and some of these more sort of conventional health and wellness uh, governing bodies are teaching and telling people, we have to know that we just, if we're going to operate inside the healthcare system, we have to understand what the healthcare system is saying and why. So we have, we kind of flip the script and we make, we make group presentations uh, at the end of the course where you present to your peers on a health topic that's assigned to you. It's very fun. It's, a, it's more fun than I'm making it sound. So all of those are compulsory. Attending the live sessions is compulsory. You have to attend them in order to satisfy the educational requirements of the master coach certification course. But what if you can't? It's absolutely realistic to imagine that you might not be able to because of your schedule, because of your kids, because of the time zone. So the, per the perfect news is we have a very simple workaround. There is an equivalency exercise you can do for any session you have to meet. It requires you to watch the video replay of the session. Just watch it, learn from it. You're going to learn a lot by watching. And then you just fill in an exercise sheet that says, here's what I took out of the session. Here's what I learned from this session. Here's what I saw that I thought was interesting in this session. You submit that to me. Then you get marked as present for the session. We've had students do the entire course this way because they lived in a faraway time slot. 
time zone. Okay. So it can be done. It's not, it's not a bad experience because the best way to learn is to practice. The second best way to learn is observational learning. So you get to sort of immerse in watching your peers practice and you will learn a lot that way. Okay. So the course, the online course expires by May 30th. Okay. So that means that you are booted out of the online curriculum on the 30th of May. You have to have all your curriculum and all your assignments done by then. So you have from the 15th of January to the end of May to get all the online curriculum done, to get it done so you can graduate the course with 100% completion, get your master coach certification. But there's one more thing I just want to talk about real quick, which is one of the other compulsory requirements of this course. And that this is a pretty fun thing. So I do want, I hope that you'll stick with me while I, uh, while I show this to you. Okay. I'm going to stop my screen share and start a new screen share because I want to show you this grading rubric. I, I find this thing really cool and really exciting. This is a, a document that I engage with a lot in Master Coach because one of your graduation requirements, well, it, it, it's the big one. In addition to finishing the online curriculum, you must submit a recorded coaching session. So this is you, you being the coach in a coaching conversation with somebody. Could be a client, could be a family member, could be one of your master coach peers. It doesn't matter. It's a, it's a proper coaching conversation from start to finish. You audio record it. You can do that using your phone. You can do it using Zoom. It's very easy. The technology is very easy. You submit this recorded coaching conversation and I grade it. It's a pass fail grade. And I graded against this rubric, which I just think is one of the most interesting things that I could show you. And I just wanted to finish today's session by showing it to you. So you can kind of get a sense of when I say competency, what am I talking about? Competent in what way? Okay. I can tell my camera is glitching out again. So please bear with me on this. It would be good if it would freeze when I was making a cute face. Wouldn't we can all agree that would be better if it would just do that, but we don't have that technology. Okay. So I'm going to um, show this to you here real quick run through it very quickly. Now, this document, I'm just going to scroll for you so you can see the sheer magnitude of this document. This is the practical skills assessment grading rubric. And every one of these line items that you're seeing on all of these pages and pages and pages and pages and pages is a competency that I'm expecting to see in this coaching conversation. Now, you have to demonstrate at least 20 of these listed competencies and of the 20 uh, demonstrated, at least 80% or 16 of them must be satisfactory. Okay. So when I listen to these coaching role plays, I'm listening for all of these things. If one is, if it's demonstrated, I check it off. Yes, you demonstrated it. Was it satisfactory? Yes or no. So we have to, you have to get this 16 out of 20 satisfactory competencies. And I'll tell you something. Master coach graduates knock this out of the park. They get way more than 20 competencies and they do really well on this, generally speaking, because we have so much practice. You get to do this part of the course anytime you feel ready, as long as it's before May 30th. Everything has to be done by May 30th. So you don't have to rush through this. You, you, just, you can record this and submit it when you feel confident enough to do it. Okay, so I'm going to run through this so quickly with you. You can see we have here competencies. I'm going to zoom in a little bit is calm, present, emotionally available, presents as focused, centered, has a dedicated physical environment for the session and or all necessary technology functional. That's important. Invites the client to set the intention for the session. Leads the coaching conversation by asking how important it is to achieve clarity in the client chosen intention. So the client sets the intention for the session. The client is actually leading the session. Isn't that wild? And we also wanna know why this intention is important to them. Why did you pick that one thing to work on today of all the things you could have talked about? Coach establishes rapport throughout the conversation, proceeds with curiosity and non-judgment. Love to hear that. Curious, non-judgmental energy while maintaining appropriate emotion. Energy and pace. The energy of the conversation is professional, calm, productive, and aligned with the client's rate of communication. The client has ample room to speak and feels like the leader of the conversation. I literally want to hear the client's voice more than your voice. Gang, if you take nothing away from this call, please memorize this rubric and execute this in your coaching conversations. It will change your client's lives. If you don't feel competent at these competencies, please join me in Master Coach. You will. In 12 weeks, you will be 100% competent, 100% confidence, and the clarity for your coaching business will emerge. 
Transitions between topics felt natural, not rushed, organized, and logical. Each topic was completely worked through before moving on. So we're talking about an organized, productive conversation. Shows empathy, acknowledges clients' feelings and emotions with non-judgmental curiosity and support. Maintains appropriate energy as client processes emotions and feelings. Uses warm vocal tones, affirming statements, and utterances that convey empathy. Here we go. Teaches less. Encourages client self-discovery more. Keeps clients' needs, interests, and agenda in forefront. The coach resists the urge to educate at all moments, allowing a teasing out of the knowledge from within the client. Coach asks permission to share information and or gauges clients' understanding of a topic prior to launching into educational talk. This is so important. Before you step into teacher mode, say, would it be all right with you if I shared a little education with you? Or if it's all right with you, I'd love to share an anecdote that another one of my clients tried that really worked for them. So invite yourself into the conversation as a teacher. But don't spend your whole time there. That's not helpful for your client. Create specific, attainable, and appropriate goals that ultimately show up to the client's intention for the session. So the client's at the intention at the beginning of the session. The end of the session has to complete with, has to finish with a goal. A goal that the client is going to go put into action for the next week. Goals are matched with an accountability plan where necessary or appropriate. We co-create goals that are in alignment with the client's vision of health and well-being. So if the client has a desire to be a better mom and just show up more in their relationships, we're not going to create goals for them to like hit a deadlift PR. That's not aligned, right? Let's stay with the client's vision here. Encourages client towards setting process goals versus outcome goals. Clients are very outcome focused. We all are. We all want everything two weeks ago, but we have to put in the work and chip away. And one of the things that we get to do with clients is nurture the belief in process rather than outcomes. It's hard. We got to work cut out for us. Asks clients to summarize their ever-evolving vision of optimal well-being and shifts the coaching conversation to match the current status of client's optimal health vision. So we're dropping into the client's vision of health often throughout the coaching relationship. We need to understand why, what does health look and feel like to them? And why is that important? Anticipates plans for and helps client navigate challenges, invites client to forecast upcoming barriers, barrier identification and solutions is, to my mind, one of the most impactful things we can do as health coaches. Encourages a collaborative relationship, accepts and encourages a client's point of view on problem solving. I love to hear this. I, I, I'm so proud to say that I hear this when I grade these practical skills assessments for 180, almost 200 graduates probably 200 graduates at this point. Um, I hear this, I hear this and I'm so proud that, that, that primal health coaches were able to kind of put aside our maybe kind of quasi dogmatic beliefs and let the client decide on their, their problem solving tactics. Listens actively remains quiet while the client leads supporting with appropriate body or vocal language comments and reflections show that the coach has listened and understood. So that's active listening. You learn that one in spades. Uh, asks open-ended questions. This takes so much practice. Oh, this can only be learned by practice. So if you ever wanted to get better at question asking, Master Coach is for you. Uses affirmations where appropriate and relevant. Uses simple content reflections to mirror back the cl client statements to demonstrate understanding. Reflection is a very powerful tool. There's other types of reflection as well. There's more complex reflections that we learned about in the course. And I do challenge health coaches to try these more complex reflections. So a simple content reflection would be just saying back what the client had said to you in their own words. But there are other ways to take what the client has said and sort of rephrase it to get them thinking differently. And that takes some pretty cool practice and it can be incredibly enlightening for the client. Asks textured and evocative questions. Coach taps into feelings, life occurrences. So you're moving the conversation forward with really interesting, almost journalistic questioning. Other types of questions like downsides of status quo, benefits of change, hypotheticals, brainstorming metaphors, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, we ask questions and observe, offer observances that explore the client's values. Everything we do in health coaching has to be important to the client, important to the client, their values. Uses silence holds space for the client, nourishes intuition, uses language that encourages the client to tap into what is felt, thought, believed, learned, and already known. The client has wisdom. The client has wisdom, has knowledge. 
How can we tap their intuition? Demonstrates flexibility and open-mindedness, encourages client self-expression, encourages experimentation as a tool to help deliver the client to self-efficacy, asks the client to summarize and confirm their understanding and acknowledgement, introduce the concept of self-compassion, facilitate self-discovery, reframing setbacks as teachable moments. It's my favorite thing to do with clients. They love it too. They learn to love it. Uh, acknowledges successes. The coach takes the time in each session to, co to co-celebrate client wins. Praises actions, not characteristics. Um, acknowledges emotions without validating. So we're not like cheerleader mode. We're really in a productive professional mode here. Very focused. We offer educational resources to clients. That's one of our big shining moments as health coaches is to offer resources. So please do that if you're not already. Remains within scope of practice if client shares medical information, lab results, prescription dosages, diagnoses, et cetera. You will nimbly navigate conversations that veer out of scope. I del I'm delighted to say that our master coach graduates are, are very good at this as well. The, because clients often will share with us their the actual medical information that is not in our scope of practice. It's not in our wheelhouse. We can listen. We can accept that. We don't have to shut them down. But can we then steer the conversation back to our realm? Coaches' personal biases are imperceptible. Such a good, such a good skill to master. Coaching clients, health literacy felt matched. The coaching session has clear outcomes that are pertinent to the client's health goals. And the coach summarizes the outcomes of the session, assesses confidence, and asks for potential barriers. That's a lot. That's a lot of competencies. And that's everything you're going to learn and practice in Master Coach. You can see how if you were to embody that and, and put these behaviors into action in every coaching conversation, you would change lives. You would change lives. So if any part of this rubric, any part of what I talked about today feels like it's eluding you and, and all the reading and devouring of podcasts and even listening to webinars like this isn't quite delivering you to the mastery that you know is available to you, I welcome you to join me in the Master Coach course. Okay, we start pretty soon. Uh, I teach this course and I love teaching it. It absolutely, um, absolutely fills me with a complete joy and I'd love to work with you. Okay. This is for the student who's looking to really hone their coaching skills. And it's for the student who wishes to become board certified. Okay. So we have a, we have a national board of health and wellness coaches that board certifies health coaches, which is very exciting, kind of a, a new and emerging concept that we should be keeping our fingers on the pulse of for any health coach. By the way, if you don't live in the United States, this is still a useful credential. I don't live in the United States. I'm a national board health and certified health and wellness coach. That line item on my resume is interesting, regardless of what country you live in. So if it's something that's interesting to you, please visit nbhwc.org to really fully understand how to apply for the board exam. The requirements that you need are you have to have graduated from an approved school, which would be the Primal Health Coach Institute Master Coach track. You have to have passed the practical skills assessment that I just showed you. You have to complete a coaching log of 50 coaching sessions. This is all itemized on the NBHWC website, nbhwc.org. <clears throat> you have to submit either a work experience or educational sort of credential of some kind. You upload all these documents into a portal once you have them. You pick a testing date and a testing location because the test is run, I want to say it's run three times a year now. So you'll find a date and a time and a location that's convenient and works for you. You'll pay your exam fee. And then you go and sit this test at this test proctoring site. Uh, the test is complex. It's a long test. My, my, my universal advice for this test is if you've practiced coaching, the test will feel easier than if you tried to learn it in a book. That's just my personal take on it. When I wrote the test, I was grateful that I was a practicing health coach because I felt like that the answers came easy to somebody who's practiced this. Book studying will help you depending on how, what kind of a test taker you are, what kind of a study you are, but honestly, the embodiment practice is what will get you across the finish line if that exam is important to you. Why would this be important to you? If you're going to go into private practice like I am, your clients probably won't care that much at this point. They might find it interesting. It's a really nice resume line item to say you're a board certified health coach. But for anybody looking to potentially get into a job as a health coach, and there are more and more and more jobs coming online every day, 
health clinics, gyms, corporate wellness, actual health coaching companies that are hiring coaches for their app or their program. And some of these uh, job postings are asking for, if not board qualified, a board certified, then they're seeking somebody who's graduated from a board approved school. So check the language there, but employers are finding the board approval um, sort of check mark to be more important. And then as we go down this garden path uh, of like functional medicine and health coaching and medical practices, we are seeing insurance companies becoming more curious about the impact of health coaching. So this is a little ways away, so don't get too excited, but it's looking like insurance companies are exploring the benefit of health coaching. And so if at some point down the line, insurance companies might pay or reimburse for health coaching, you probably would need to be a health uh, board certified health coach in order to uh, make that work. Now I'm speaking about that's, that's very Amer very U S centric type of thing. I live in Canada. We have universal healthcare. So there is really no insurance company kind of thing like that, but I think it still tracks. I think over time, even other countries of the world, for example, universal healthcare in Canada, health coaching is not covered, but maybe down the line it will be. And if I say, Hey, I'm a national board approved health and wellness coach, I've got this, this credential, perhaps, you know, at that point, my services will be covered by universal healthcare or by insurance companies in the U S or whatever the case may be. So I will say that every year that I have this conversation, um, about board approval, it seems like it's becoming more important. When we first started looking into it, it didn't seem that important at all. It seemed like kind of a nice to have, but every year that goes by, it's like, you know what, this is, this seems to be becoming a bit more important. So I don't think you have to hurry to become board certified. You don't have to hurry. Right, but you could take the master coach course, get that credential under your belt, and then you could apply to sit for the board exam whenever it felt right for you. But you, at least you would have the credential out of the way. Okay. As my very quick light touch on board approval. I've officially been talking to you for over an hour and I appreciate your patience. Um, that was a lot. It was a lot. And I did talk fast because I had a lot to get through and I'm losing my voice. So I definitely have to wrap it up. But remember, you can always reach out to me at mastercoach at primalhealthcoach.com. If you have questions about this course specifically, okay, because I made it, I teach it. I love it. I've taken every class through it since it was created. It's one of my joy points in my life. And I'd love to, I'd love to just like help you and nurture you into confidence, confidence, and clarity in your coaching business. Cause we need you, we need you out there practicing and your clients do too. Very good. Thank you so much again for your attention and we'll see you soon. Bye-bye.